So we asked the question uh, that do you think this project needs to be continued or what should we do with this? We also know that the issues of our double identities of uh, Reverend Kusi et etc., the, the, the shraj specifically states that the, the petitioner did not provide the needed evidence even though uh, they had continuously um, impressed on him to do so. And so here we are. Well, this report just came out. I have to ask Dennis. Um, on the corridors of power, what's the response to this very findings of the Commission on Human Rights and Administrative Justice? Dennis. Thank you very much, Roland. Um, it's a good morning to your good listeners and viewers for wherever they are listening to us. Um, we would come to the uh, charge report and they will delve into it. But before we go into it, by way of information, it is also important that we share with the Ghanaian good people of Ghana that um, just yesterday, the President of the Republic commissioned four hospitals in an instant, in a day, in a single day. Sabunum Hospital was commissioned, Tredia Hospital was commissioned, Swami Hospital was commissioned, and Dobonso Hospital was commissioned. Yesterday, same day, the President of the Republic also commissioned the Atafwa Owabi Bridge, which is quite a huge project that was that's, that's very dear to the good people of Ashanti region. Um, today and tomorrow, you will see more of uh, the electric cars, which is a very innovative and strategic way of ensuring that the cost of transportation in our country comes down. Uh, they are in, and the launching is, is, is going to happen. Then, my favorite is the outboard motors, the solar-powered outboard motors. For some of us who've uh, lived a lot of our lives in the central region, they know the, how the economy of the central region revolves around the purchases of premised fuel and what have you you would see it happen. It's been tested, and then by the grace of God, our fisher folks uh, would have access to the use of it, and then the free dialysis, and what have you. I think that all of these underscores the government's commitment to ensure that the good people of this country have life and then have access to some safety net that supports the citizens of the country. Uh, whilst we get into the details of the National Cathedral issue, I want to state clearly that... Um, Yesterday, I think that I got a report around 3 p.m., uh, 4 p.m. there, but late in the, a little bit into the evening. And then we all know that uh, the charge, charge mandate emanates from Article 218, 247, and then 287, uh, as enshrined in the 1992 Constitution. So it is not out of place for anyone to have an issue and want to go to charge for remedy. It is also not an issue for anyone to respond to issues of uh, findings from Shraj. First of all, let us also take the cognizance that in September, Deloitte Ghana issued a report on the activities and operations of the National Cathedral. And in the report of Deloitte, it was clearly stated that no adverse findings uh, when it comes to financial proprietary or whatsoever, the actions of the Board of Trustees for the National Cathedral was found. I take cognizance of that because it is also an important and independent audit report that went not only to um, the five points raised by the Honorable Okujeto, but all other aspects pertaining to the activities of the National Cathedral and its board. Mm. Um, the first issue that is raised by the report uh, is where I will have some disagreement. And then I believe that the National Cathedral Board of Trustees is going to appeal this report. And I can say for a fact that they are going to appeal this report. That, that part, why am I saying that? Um, that part impugns that the uh, proprietary uh, procurement impropriety. Uh, when you uh, look at the article, uh, Procurement Act 663, as amended in 914, uh, there are certain things which do not go according to the law. I think that we need to first state that in the case of National Cathedral and Rebad, or Rebade uh, Limited, when the contract was being entered into or executed, mm. the National Cathedral was not a public institution. It is very important we state that. And hence, there is a limitation as to how the Procurement Act of this country can go into it. But if you go through the report from Shraj, it doesn't take cognizance of the date of the establishment of the National Cathedral and as against the contractual terms that exist between the National Cathedral and the Rebed. So you realize that before the National Cathedral became a public institution, by the outcry of the public and parliament and then the need to ensure that there is a continuity of project by the National Cathedral. It was now transformed from a private run or a private registered entity to a public registered entity. 
So if the charge impugns or speaks to the issue of the procurement act being breached, then it becomes a problem because at the time of going into or entering into the contract, there was nothing like that. Then the procurement act now has limitations in that regards. That is one. Then two, I think that in as much as we want to look at the impropriety as cited by the Shrive report, we also need to look at where the Shrive report clearly says that the, uh, the allegations leveled against uh, the, the minister of God is, is not true. I am not the pro, uh, PRO. You mean Reverend Kusibwa? Reverend Kusibwa. About the double identities. Yes. Uh, I think that the report, as you read, was very clear that he's not done anything wrong and that he does not have dual passport. It goes on to list the number of passports that he has had and clearly gives the, the, the names and identities under these passports and the issuance of these passports. I think that the first thing we need to do, as much as I'm not a PRO for the man of God, is that there is some decent apology that must go to the man by the honorable member There's of There's a case in court subsequent to that. But it limited us, limiting ourselves to the conversation on the table. That is the Shraj report. It is very important that if you level allegations against a person and then you are unable to prove or substantiate it, you apologize. That is what all decent people ought to do. It is not wrong to think that there is something wrong or fishy. It, it, the Honorable Member of Parliament reserves that right and we give it to him. But upon the findings that that is wrong, you do not come to your Facebook page and still insist upon knowing very well that your allegations is unsubstantiated and the report duly acknowledges that it is unsubstantiated and even goes further to give all the uh, passports that has been given under the name of um, the, the, the Minister of God. Yes. So for me, the first thing that we need to set on the records is that the Deloitte report has issued on the 24th of September. What's your point? Are you laying credence and giving precedence to the Deloitte report than the findings of the Commission for Human Rights and Administrative Justice. So it is important that we bring the... Deloitte. So the priority for the government of Ghana... I'm coming. ...is to prioritize Deloitte over Shraj. So you ask the question. It is important nobody is prioritizing Deloitte over Shraj. Shraj is an institution of state mandated by Article 218247287. Clear and final. Important that we note that. But Shraj has its own limits and limitations and what have you. Shraj has its mandate and what have you. But it is also important that we take cognizance of the Deloitte report. Why do we need to take cognizance of the Deloitte report? Because the Deloitte report was even much more comprehensive than the five-legged allegations of the Shraj report. It is not to put aside the Shraj report, but it is also important, very, very important, for whoever wants to do a very important and detailed analysis of the issue to look at what Deloitte said because we cannot brush the light away. And two, we just oppose it to what Shraj is saying. Then the Board of Trustees have a right to appeal in the court of our laws and say that what you said does not take cognizance of the laws. What does the law say? The law does not subject private entities registered as private under the full or to the full rigors of Procurement Act 914. It does not. So it must be emphatically stated clearly that there is a distinguishing there's a distinguishing factor between how private... I don't understand, because there are, there are precedents of cases mm -hmm. where, for example, the Auditor General's report, um, it cites a number of companies, including the Justman Group, mm -hmm. with their dealings with the Ministry of Health as well as the National Health Insurance mm -hmm. Authority. And such entities are private entities. So when, that, when that, you cite... That, that are doing business with government entities. Let's and so once you're doing... Let's, government, let's, the, let's the give, PPA Act... Let's, let's, give, let's give explanation to that. It's not too difficult mm -hmm. to understand. Mm -hmm. You cite Jospon. Jospon is a private. Then you cite their dealings with... The, uh, the I'm, national only, I'm only citing a ministry. Based on, uh, no, I'm coming on an undertaking. So, so then take your the, time and understand my point. No, no, no. It's, I'm not. I'm. I'm not saying I misunderstand you. I'm only saying that that considered view that you have that if you're a private entity, you are not subject to the procurement act cannot be true okay. because we've had actions that have been taken against private entities. So you're comparing an in an incident that is totally different from this. No, I'm not Let talking about the incident. I'm talking about the specific nature of working and I'm with saying government that, And I'm saying that in that instance you cited, it was a private entity working with a government entity. But in this instance, when the contract was entered into, it was private entity entering into a contract with another private entity. So it is not subject to the full rigors of the financial, uh, of the procurement act. I'm not saying it's not, it's not subject to it entirely. It is not subject to everything in it. So there is a clear line of distinction, a line drawn. Please when you are dealing with private to private, 
the rules are different from when it is being when it is a public to private dealing. So you need to first of all address yourself or take cognizance of when the contract was being entered into or when the contract was entered into and the fact that surrounds that situation at the time. That then you ask yourself what happened last year and how did the National Cathedral metamorphosize into a, 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 a public entity as stated by the, the Shah report. So that is the distinction that we must lay clear and emphatic. And that is why I believe that the National Cathedral Board, as at the time that they were entering into the contract, did not err in that regard. So, that is my considered mm, view. Mm.